Hi, Dan here from Watch Waker Appliance Repairs. This video I'm going to quickly show you how to sort out problems you've got the oven not running, it's got power to it but not cooking, it's something to do with the clock. So it could well be because you've had a power cut and the clock's flashing at you and you just can't get it to set for some reason. Or it could be that you've got an older analog clock and the um, someone's been cleaning it and bumped it. So we'll just go through all the common clocks in the ovens here in New Zealand and how the easy way is to set each one. As you probably know, if you have a power failure, you can turn your oven on and nothing will happen if the clock's not set. So you need to have a time set on the clock, even though it's not the correct time, it needs to be a time. So there's a couple of different main styles. There's the six button and the five button clock. If you've got a more modern clock with five buttons, basically you've got a little hand symbol here, which is your manual button. And if you press the manual button, you'll hear a click. Uh, I actually haven't got one of those clocks here to show you at the moment, so you hear a click and the time will change to 12, and then you can use a plus or minus to set the time. It doesn't have to be the right time, but when you hit that click, it'll then work. These older um, six button clocks, which are on a lot of the Fisher and Pikes and some of the Simpson ovens, is slightly different. So if you're pushing that and nothing's happening, all you need to do is hold down the left hand two buttons. Don't worry about the symbols that are on them. Hold down the left hand two buttons, and you see immediately it changes zero. There's a slight click there as I change the time, and then now that indicator lights come on, so it's started to heat. If you need to um, change the time again, you hold down those two and then you can continue to change the time and set the correct time. If you've accidentally set an automatic, so if we put four minutes cooking time, starting in four or five minutes time, you can see it's turned off again. The easiest thing is that you just turn the power back off and then on and then reset it. Uh, if you want to use your automatic function, then have a look at in the manual as to how it's done. And the third type of uh, digital clock is a three button clock. So you've only got mode, plus or minus. Now you see we've got four things written on the side here. We've got timer, clock, end time, cook time. And then at the moment it's got clock flashing. Basically we use this mode to scroll through the four functions. Now as you can see there, as soon as I press the button, the light came on. So you basically highlight clock, set the time. Oh, I was too slow there. Highlight clock, set the time. Or just scroll to another mode and immediately lock the time in. So Chances are if you have one of these three button clocks, you've accidentally got it set already and you didn't actually come looking for this video. Or you may have one of the good old analog clocks. Most of these clocks are all very similar. So the Fisher and Biker ones are all like this and then the Simpson ones are very similar. You have a standard analog clock, you have two buttons, but you can also push and turn them as well as turn them. You have a little wee window, which could have a hand or various other symbols in it. Uh, and you have a third uh, hand. So you could, you have the hour hand, then this one's got a little indicator there. You could have another little uh, mini hour hand, basically, that sits underneath the, the main hour hand. When everything's working normally, you have the hand in that window there. As the clock uh, rotates around, it carries the, the third hand with it, and everything just works normal. If, when you're cleaning, you bump it, and you've got something other than a hand in this window, it's not going to heat. So if you've got the little alarm symbol or a zero, now if you have time in the window, if we go a bit further, it will heat because it's just going to rotate itself around on that timer, but then when it gets to zero, it's going to stop. But basically look for that hand in the window there, and then it will heat. Uh, and to do that, on these clocks, you're turning this knob without pushing it in, just turning it, and it only wants to turn one way, so we can go all the way around, hand. And the other the one is on this side. So if we push in and turn this, and again that one only turns, oh, that one's turned both ways. This is basically the start time. So if the start time is not at the current hour, then it stopped heating. So to fix that, you just push in and turn this until it clicks in. Or you can also just uh, push and turn this one. I've got to go all the way around. Let's make life easy for myself. Set the white hand to there, and you'll hear a click. And that's clicking it back into manual mode. So that's the two things you're looking for, the hand and the, hour, the automatic um, start time being in line with the current hour time. And that applies to basically any of these analog clocks. So once again, we have a window. This window has a zero in it. So if I turn, start turning dials, a hand. So that puts it into automatic there. And then on this one, I think, sorry if I can get this thing to turn, gosh. 
the start time doesn't want to change. There we go. You can see it's actually we've got an hour, a minute, a second, and we've got this extra hand here. So now I've pushed in and got that turning. I just got to turn that back until it clicks into place. Big clunk, and it clicks back into into manual mode. So you're looking for the hand, and you're looking for the the start time being underneath the hour hand. So this one's actually entirely hidden, so you may not even know that hand is in there if you've never accidentally bumped it while cleaning, and then you got an extra extra hand on your clock. And then this one is just the same as that last one we looked at, just in a more modern shell. We have the cook time there, which we want on manual, and we have the start time, which we want hiding underneath the eye hand. Now what you can also do if you've got an appliance technician or an electrician doing work in your oven, um, and I especially recommend this in rentals or places where there's a lot of different people using an oven who may not be familiar with it, you can actually bypass the clock. So if you talk to the electrician or whatever and they'll do it, basically on some of these clocks it's a relay, um, and on these older mechanical clocks it's mechanical switches, but they can adjust, we can change the wiring, either we'll take the wire that runs to the clock and then onto the thermostat and we'll just run it directly to the thermostat, or we'll bridge out and jumper them onto the relay so that the switch or relay, depending on which clock you got, isn't actually doing anything. So that way you can have it set to whatever you want it to, um, or you can have the clock flashing away at zero, zero, zero for its heart's content and the oven will still continue working fine.